Atul Gopal from Plugin India and I am here today at Ola's Future Factory in Krishnagiri. Uh, huge building, uh, not fully occupied yet but the plan is that once it gets fully occupied it will be rolling out about 10 million scooters which is probably the largest in the world and we will kind of take you through details of what happened through the day in the blog and in the uh, commentary that follows with the b-rolls given by the company. Pretty impressive factory, uh, one of the largest structures that I have seen, uh, 600 meters by 300 meters by 17 meters, it is a big box and this is just one of the two big boxes that they plan to put over there. The current building can have, uh, has got space for three lines and uh, each of these lines can do about uh, one scooter every 20 seconds, uh, so you can do the math. My guess is that uh, you know when we were there at the factory I was count you know checking the speed of the conveyor belt and I could see one scooter rolling out every 60 seconds. But I am also guessing that that is not the rate at which the scooter normally gets produced. Uh, my guess is that probably they would be doing a single shift operation and uh, possibly about 500-600 per day is what I think the current production is. And in a way uh, that is what the current sale is also because uh, there have been a fair amount of calculation, uh, cancellations, uh, Bhavesh was asked questions and of course see, he would not really be uh, very clear on the specifics of how many have cancelled and how many have not. But they did open up bookings in March and I believe that they will open up bookings very soon uh, in the next month or two I think you should have bookings that can start. Uh, another reason why I think the sales forecast is not very bright is because they are talking of uh, starting off uh, the sales for a lower priced scooter also which is a good thing. So the S1 was discontinued as far as production is concerned but now they are talking about S1 coming back. My personal uh, request and I spoke with Bhavesh about this in the press conference also was that they need to give options to customers as far as batteries are concerned and uh, I would be personally very happy with an LFP battery. I asked this question specifically to Bhavesh and thankfully they are saying yes right now they will consider LFP in future. The current chemistry is NCA. NCA stands for Nickel, Cobalt and Aluminium Oxide and it is it's, uh, the thermal runaway uh, rate is much higher for NCA even compared to NMC. So if there is something that go wrong that goes wrong the fire incident happens very very fast and uh, that is what makes NCA slightly tricky battery to handle. So that is the reason why I made this request. Now the LFP cells are bigger in diameter compared to the NMC cells. So the packing density changes. So given that the space is at a constraint, uh, I would assume that if Ola does switch to LFP, the kilowatt hour battery, the storage capacity will reduce which means from a user's point of view the range will be less. But I guess uh, today uh, range is not as important as far as safety or you know range can't be kind of you know can be sacrificed if you think that uh, you are sitting on a vehicle which is safer. So now let us let's kind of take a guided tour uh, of the factory. Material handling has been uh, shifted from manual to these uh, assembly line robos if you want to call them or uh, automated vehicles and uh, this is made from a company called Novus and the particular model is called Carry. Uh, what happens is that each of the vehicles gets a kit and that kit is brought to the station that is one thing and second is uh, these empty trolleys have to be taken back for re uh, at the end. Now the good part is that you know in the 90s uh, when I used to work at Tata Motors we had these kind of automated vehicles but there was a path through which they would travel and uh, they were not smart enough to notice if there were any obstacles in the path. So these guys they use LiDAR and uh, they know if someone is kind of on their path and they do not travel at too high a speed as you can see from the video it is about 3 to 4 kilometers per hour. So good it kind of saves a lot of manual labor. So here is a video of how the batteries get made. So this is the empty jig on which the top and bottom cover of the uh, cells are placed. The top and bottom signify the cell top and cell bottom but not the vehicle top and vehicle bottom. That is actually kind of placed transversely, the cells are placed transversely. 
so here you have these white things over here are the uh, possibly either the bottom or the top plate most probably the bottom plate so here uh, uh, the glue has been applied to the uh, bottom and top and this is the glue is used for sticking the cells into the top plate and the bottom element the cell is being used as a structural element so the checking is going here cells are coming out from a sorting machine so they have been sorted for voltages and impedance and then based on what the voltage is it goes to a particular line most of the time we saw them being dumped only into one out of the two lines there is provision for what eight lines so here uh sorted cells are being assembled together into a pack so you got a pick and place robot which kind of picks up either four or three cells at a time and then kind of push them into the bottom cover uh, bottom plate so uh, at one end you have seen that there are only a row of three and uh, at another end there are row of four cells total 224 cells in all in a single scooter uh, two modules 112 cells each there is some operation i am not too sure what it is it could be a gluing operation and the curing of these cells happens uh, under ultraviolet light so once the and these are very fast curing so the moment your uv light is kind of pushed in that means it's kind of ready over here what you are seeing is a bus bar these are made out of aluminum and this is what is used for joining the individual cells uh, using what is called as wire bonding we will see the wire bonding process shortly uh here is the wire bonding that is happening so you got an aluminum wire again so uh these wires act as fuses right so that if there is for example a short circuit of sorts then automatically that cell will kind of get disconnected so no danger of uh, it doing damage to other cells we've again got a pick and place operation here we've now got the black external cover and you know which is kind of been wrapped around the top and bottom uh, plates and uh, the bms is going to be mounted at the center there are two modules lh and rh okay so here we have some more close ups of the battery line uh, you can see the mounting of the uh, bottom plates uh, for the lh and the rh module uh, and uh, this is where the gluing is going to happen so this is where after the glue has been you know glue drops have been kind of put in then you will have the so this is the assembly you can see the fins at the side this is the bms mounted at the center of the two modules and here you have a torquing operation going on which is very important you need to move the right torques for ip67 otherwise you have water which can go in there is also an uh, air leak test that happens and there is a very nice arrangement to have the torques uh, checked by a green light this is your testing area of the battery so then air conditioned area each battery is uh, at 30% soc during the manufacturing stage it goes up to 80 100% then it is got down to 80% 20% again and finally at the end of all the testing it is charged up to 50% when it leaves the factory so the trolley is continue to be uh, like the battery is continue to be on the trolley all the way up to the assembly line so this is the weld shop and uh, you have about 40 child parts that go into a frame and uh, this does not all happen in a single uh, time so right now you can see that she started loading the uh, components so we can see about 1 2 3 3 components that have been loaded so far so this is basically forming the basic skeleton of the scooter and uh, you have cross members and you have you know so all of these are in a jig and you can see a lot of hydraulic slash pneumatics which is used because the moment the parts are fitted into the jig you have kind of pushers which come and hold that particular part and just to ensure that the part is fit in the right thing she is using the mallet mallet for kind of uh, pushing that in and as you can see this is bare steel the painting is not happened yet uh, it will happen after all the welding gets over now very neat arrangement so you have uh, the one side loading is happening and the same table the other side you have the welding which is happening so these are the uh, two robotic arms that abb has provided which is on station number 1 and uh, this is using a process called mig welding what is happening is you have a wire uh, metal wire which is kind of pushing through and uh, the advantage of mig welding is you don't have to worry about maintaining electrode distance which you have to do if you were going to be using tungsten or tungsten basic fixed extrude electrodes 
and uh, it's a standard uh, industry practice for the automobile industry also mig welding is very common in the auto industry and uh, the uh, welds have to be really good quality otherwise you can have a frame cracking or even distorting and uh, if that frame distorts then the plastic panels are not going to fit in properly so a lot of you who have noticed gaps in plastic panels it's basically because the 3d coordinates of the frame are not what they are supposed to be even if you have a difference of about half mm or whatever it is then you see start seeing bigger gaps and this is a learning curve that ola will have to go through uh, as it goes ahead because uh, companies like maruti etc have really kind of perfected the art of welding and they know how to manage gaps quite well so this is uh, uh, all happening because of uh, the weld area over here half the welding has been done and now uh, more child parts will get added at uh, this stage and then it will go in for the second round of uh, welding on station 1 and uh, next to it is station 2 the frame semi finished frame is being lifted from station 1 and it is now going into station 2 where you will have more parts which are kind of fitted on and uh, then it will go for final welding and from there on the dispatch to the paint shop. So there are two paint shops at the factory. Uh, the one that you are seeing right now is the plastic paint ones. They use solvent uh, based paints over here. The metal one is using water based paint which is more environmentally friendly. So the Painted parts are now getting primed. Uh, there are some coatings that they need to be put before, you know, so that the electrostatic process, the paint is uh, attracted towards the plastic parts. And here you can see these ABB robots, which are kind of, uh, you know, doing the painting job. So this is a hazardous job, and it's good that uh, most of the job is being done by these robots. Uh, each of these robots has got about an option of ten paint. It takes about a uh, couple of minutes or maybe 10 minutes to kind of change colors uh, at this particular line and uh, the last coat that they are applying is a clear coat. Uh, the matte finish bakers do not have a clear coat uh, going into this particular thing. So this is the outside view of the factory and what I do not like is using black color walls. Uh, it just kind of you want to make it as cool as possible and the white black arch body to be is not really a very cool color. Thankfully the roof is not painted black. So that is kind of silverish whitish so that kind of reflects. Now here is uh, you know nobody comes on Ola scooters to work which is which is sad because most of them travel 15-20 kilometers and are ladies. So they have this fleet of buses uh, about 30-40 of them which kind of do the ferrying up and down. And the sad part again is not a single of this is electric. So I think there is some dog fooding required at the company level. Uh, they must encourage their own staff and their contractors to be using uh, more electric. So this is a bird's eye view of the factory. You can see the trucks uh, parked which is your material area. And uh, there is plan to put up another shed of almost the same dimensions at one end. And uh, an interesting part is that. Uh, uh, there is a plan to have a 100 acre forest around and you can see from the topography of the area they definitely need more greenery over here. It is very rocky area and there is a 2 acre forest plant right in the center of the factory or I think 2 or 4 acres and they plan to take the roof out. Uh, my suggestion to them would have been to use a glass panel instead of a roof so that uh, the oxygen uh, remains inside the factory premises uh, and they can probably have transparent shoot. The roof definitely has a lot of potential for solar. And it is a tall roof, so that is a good thing, so it does not really heat up the factory so much, 70 meters height. So here you have the PMSM motor and the belt drive uh, module. Uh, this is not being made currently at Ola, it is kind of coming in from outside, they plan to make it in future. The frame is being painted and assembled and welded in house. So here the frame comes from the paint shop and is kind of mounted onto the jig and in the next operation you have the bolting of the motor pack to the frame and this is a very interesting operation you got the battery after being tested at the 8 hour testing at the final assembly is now ready to go in look at how neatly the frame kind of you know ac accommodates the battery the battery is heavy it weighs about 24 kg 224 cells 
so now the orange wires indicate high voltage and you can see at the front uh, the some kind of sealant is being applied because that's the mudguard area you don't want water leakage happening because a lot of electronics which is going to be fitted from now on in the front fork area so you can already see this is the lock which is being fitted in now you probably have a dc dc converter the white thing which is kind of here is the uh, disc brakes uh, the hydraulic oil kind of getting filled ready to get filled in over there and uh, can see so many harnesses and so many connections and even a single one kind of going out of action is going to be stopping your scooter so which is why it's very very critical to have good connectors in the scooter uh, the dicky is the first one that gets fitted the painted parts there are about 40 of them in all so they get fitted on later on so here you can see the charging unit kind of uh, getting tested and being okayed ola badging promotional video so obviously they'll spend a lot of time showing you the ola badging stuff uh, it doesn't really take so much time there are in all total 40 stations in a 110 meter long line the front wheel being assembled uh, very neat single fork design but uh, there is some criticism that the wheelbase is too long and that is the reason why the collapse of the front fork is happening in accidents but we'll kind of cover that later on so here we are coming towards the end of the line the vehicle is ready for uh, you know it's on platform right now and it has to be kind of got down to ground level and there are uh, these dynamometers waiting for the testing which at the end of the line so the scooter is being lifted by a kind of crane and uh, it will kind of be put down it's 118 kg so it's not really uh, easy for human beings to kind of uh, you know lift and kind of put the scooter down all these uh, operators that you see are graduates they are graduates they are from all the neighboring areas and they don't have any auto industry experience so they have all been trained for this job in the last four to five months and i think they're doing a good job so here it is the scooter uh, ready for unloading now the crane comes out the and the scooter is on its own so here is another line another scooter so again we see the uh, start where the mating of the motor transmission is happening to the frame so concentrate on the person who is wearing the black t-shirt so she is uh, attaching the motor and the uh, belt unit and she is keeping it in the uh, assembly area the kind of jig for used for assembly and here you have the frame so they are mounted in such a way that the connections are easy to make so now this will kind of move on so this is the kit trolley so each of these so what you saw just dragged in each scooter has a kit trolley of its own this is an advantage when it comes to customized vehicles which they are not doing right now they are not even given option between s1 and s1 pro today but i believe that will happen quite soon because they want to reduce prices there has been some fall in demand here we have the kit kind of thing only the black plastic parts are in the kit and the painted parts are at separate stations along the assembly line so you can see the dicky area dicky being mounted that's another big unit which kind of comes in this happens after the battery has been mounted and the motor has been mounted the front area fork area you can see the what is possibly the dc dc uh, unit and you can see some harnesses being kind of got in for uh, connecting the various uh, electronics and electrical parts of the vehicle again a close up of the dicky plastic painted parts have kind of now been fitted on so now the good part is that uh, they're doing a good job of inventory management because the bare plastic comes on me in black color and then depending on the orders the painting is done at the last minute so that way you don't have to maintain separate inventories of separate colors so this can be this is one advantage of having the plastic uh, painting operations in house and what's what's good is that uh, these are all people who have not really got any automotive experience here is a company which doesn't have automotive experience they've employed people who have no automotive experience and at the end of the day they're still making good scooters so i think uh, credit has to be given where it is due and i would say that even in a place which is so far away from bangalore getting good people would have also been a problem so you have to do with local talent and i think uh, I will not know about the rest of the country but people in Krishnagiri are definitely happy with the factory coming in. It probably is one of the biggest employers of the region. So we have come to the end again that lovely conveyor it is at floor level moves at 3 to 4 kilometers per hour and uh, you have uh, a lot of uh, 
screens which are showing you daily production rates and targets and all that. So there are no whiteboards, blackboards which you see in conventional assembly lines which are here. This is the end of the uh, line conveyor. So you can see that it is now ready to kind of roll back and start its journey all over again. This is a bird's eye view of the assembly line. They are planning to have 10 such conveyors uh, and each of them will have a maximum throughput of about uh, one scooter coming out every 20 seconds. Uh, so the, the production is decided by the speed of the conveyor. So the supervisor when he or she makes a decision of setting the speed, they decide how many vehicles you are going to be making on a day. The day we visited, they were rolling it out at about one scooter out per minute. That was the speed of the conveyor. And uh, that should give you about a thousand scooters in three shifts easily. Uh, maybe the actual production is only about 500 per day. So this is the small test track that they have inside the factory and uh, uh, American style they want you to kind of use the right side of the road which I thought was a bit funny but <laughs> I guess it is up to them. And uh, we did a testing of two things over here. One is uh, I tested the music function. Uh, I had to borrow a mobile phone from one of the Ola team members because uh, it is connected via Bluetooth. And, uh, I think even at 40 kilometers per hour, as far as the speaker is concerned, you have to play it at full volume because anything lower than that, the wind noise is much more. <laughs> now, how your neighbors will kind of uh, react to this particular thing, it is a damn good feature for highway riding. I know of somebody who was driving a Harley Davidson who got stopped by the Delhi police and said that uh, your uh, speakers are illegal. So, uh, whether Ola is kind of looked at the legalities or not, I am not too sure, but I think it is a cool feature to have, definitely very good for picnics, at least that is what uh, the Ola team also thinks and uh, I would probably agree with them. The other thing that I tested over here was cruise control and uh, I found that very, very cool, you know, you could kind of just go at a certain speed and do a press and then it kind of continues uh, at that particular speed uh, till the time that you change the accelerator or brake or the regen. Uh, manual region kind of a thing and uh, I think uh, this is one feature that existing Ola users would come to love and uh, this alone is a kind of a killer app for the company I would say. Okay, so this is your water wading test and uh, you can see that is about 200-250 mm of water uh, maybe a bit less maybe 150 mm or so and uh, vehicle seems to be going in without too much of a problem over here. And once the scooters are rolled out from the assembly line, they roll on to uh, these dynamometers, which basically are kind of a final quality check. Uh, each scooter is put through about 25 tests over here, which include things like what is the maximum speed, what is the braking distance, even the light throws are being checked over here, right? So, you got uh, basically a set of rollers. So, you know, if you have seen those gyms where people kind of walk on those tracks, so you have a roller which is uh, there at the wheel and uh, you know you are each scooter is being tested uh, at this particular roller and there is a kind of bluetooth connection which is established between the scooter and the uh, machine. So the scooter parameters are being rechecked so to say by this particular machine. There are uh, 4 such machines for a single line. So at the end there will probably be 40 such uh, dynamometers uh, once the full production of this particular factory gets started. Uh, so, it is interesting, this is something which is very standard practice for almost all uh, the petrol engine ones, uh, but fortunately over here you do not need to worry about things like exhaust and all that. So that is one area which uh, the ICE engine people need to get worried about. So they have a tailpipe uh, pipe which kind of takes out all the exhaust from this particular room. Yeah, so here she is kind of accelerating and checking for regen to some extent speeds of almost 115 kmph being achieved on this particular dynamometer by the scooter and uh, that is interesting because that is something I have never tried in real life. I have chickened out at 90 kmph. So the visit ended with a kind of question and answer session. Uh, most of the Ola senior team was present uh, but of course most of the answering was done by Bhavesh himself. Now. Uh, there were a lot of senior journalists, uh, not just from the auto industry, but from the financial news media also who were kind of present. 
and the first question was obviously the one related to safety and first i think uh, you know there is a lot of confusion in people's mind uh, a lot of people have seen a lot of fires happening and there is this assumption in the mind of the people that all of the scooters that have caught fire have been ola scooters so let's clarify uh, as of now there is only one scooter in pune uh, which has caught fire and that's about it uh, so touch wood so far matlab uh, you know there's there been no repeat incidents but nevertheless because of the other company scooters uh, which were catching fire there has been a lot of pressure on the company now normally you do a recall when you have a root cause which you have analyzed but i think uh, they have not really been able to get to a root cause that's the indication that uh, bhave seem to be giving to us but uh, because of pressure coming in from gadkari and company they have taken a decision to do a recall now what they do in a recall i don't know but they've generally announced that is going to be a general health check up which is not really a kind of uh, anything too great but uh, the best part is let's kind of wait and see i am sure that uh, they have reconfigured their software uh, they might have reduced current rates they might have you know taken action to kind of prevent uh, the overheating of uh, the electronics or the charging or whatever now uh, uh, wa- a lot of questions were asked related to battery cooling and uh, bhavesh point was that uh, the cooling that is there in ether and chetak is mostly for the motor area and it is not so much so for the battery uh, at a personal level i would disagree i would say that some of the air flow definitely would happen on the battery area uh, another point uh, that i think uh, which we did not ask but we observed was that although the battery pack has fins but the pack uh, outside casing is made from plastic so what is the utility of having a fin in a plastic i am not so clear about what i did here uh, not very substantiated but the original very original atergo design had an aluminum casing now an aluminum casing with a fin would have made a lot of more sense you know and i think even the ether has an aluminum casing for the battery so that's something that uh, possibly ola can look at in future it dissipates heat faster so uh, another interesting question that got asked was uh, about uh, you know a lot of manufacturing defects that are kind kind of coming ahead and uh, the question was about uh, whether the speed at which the whole launch happened was it the reason why the quality was low uh, so bavesh thought that this was probably a question on the competence of the company and uh, i think he was a bit defensive over there and my personal take is that i think uh, ola has demonstrated to the world what can happen as far as time frames are concerned and uh, let me put it this way that unless you really put vehicles onto the field you don't really get feedback so there is they did uh, a few million kilometers of testing is that what i told but you know there is no substitute to a user handling it and misusing it so i would probably be on bhavesh side as far as the speed of the launch is concerned i think it was fair i think it's a creditable job that they were able to kind of put the launch in this thing there are of course software bugs which kind of can be rolled out and that is unfortunately because software is easy to change people tend to say okay even if it goes wrong i'll kind of take care of it later on uh, maybe they could have done a slightly better job as far as the software is concerned but they are in the process of rejigging the software the cruise control has been launched now the music is kind of working right so i think you will end up seeing a much better scooter in a few weeks time another question which kind of was linked to this particular one about perfection not being achieved in scooter was that if you not really kind of done well enough or you know have not ironed out the glitches in the scooters why you kind of even thinking about cars at this point of time uh again uh fair question but you know you need somebody with vision matlab it's like i'm sure nobody asked this question to mukesh ambani that uh, you know why you kind of got your fingers in so many pies but uh, the good part is that uh, cars are also synergistic with the other big project that bhavesh is taking on which is actually manufacturing batteries and uh, i would say the interesting point to be noted is that the government seems to have expressed a lot of confidence in our young friend and the fact that they've given almost 50% of the capacity to ola uh, for the battery manufacturing in under the under the pli scheme is an indication uh i did ask bhavesh a single question from my side related to batteries where 
uh, I would say getting technology for batteries is simple, but the raw material could be a challenge because right now it is dominated by China, the raw material. And Bhavesh had a very interesting point to make uh, in answer to the question that I asked him and he said that uh, the processing is dominated by China, it is not the raw material. And uh, like in the oil industry, when oil prices go up, you have more exploration that starts happening. And his point is that if lithium prices continue to go the way they are, you will have more lithium exploration that will happening and you will probably have more sources of lithium coming up and processing you will have alternatives coming up to China very soon. India could possibly be one of them. Uh, so I think very interesting and insightful answer to that question. Interesting question that got asked was the direct to customer model that the company has adopted and especially the implication on service. So, I think uh, the counter or the answer over there was an interesting one. Now, obviously, there were quite a few teething troubles and I think Bhavesh was being honest over there. Uh, I think the first trouble that the company faced was in vehicle registration. Uh, now, dealers, they know local people, they know how to get things done, they know how to bribe, right? And I think Ola probably learnt it the hard way. Uh, so, I think they kind of got that done. So, that part of the process kind of is done. So, they know how to get the registration of the vehicles, etc. done. Now, uh, service is according to me a challenge which is ongoing because uh, I do not really think they will be able to kind of, you know, uh, get that right very, very fast. So, social media tends to amplify even a few incidents of service deficiencies. And I think this is where communication is important and this is where community building is important. Uh, today, I would say that there is no, uh, what should I say, peer group help that is kind of available to Ola users and I think that is something that the company should really work on. Uh, Plugin India is offered to help them out with that, uh, no reply from the company on that front. But uh, I think uh, there has to be a particular uh, time which is committed to a particular customer and uh, the other thing that I think the company should do is they should have a... Uh, some spare scooters which are available so that you know if you are taking in a vehicle for a serious problem then you give that spare scooter to the customer so that you know they are not handicapped because of the want of a vehicle. So, there is a few tweaking around in the service strategy that the company will need to kind of look at uh, and I think it should be something which can be managed uh, do as a dealer end up providing better service. Uh, Personally, I will not name the company, but I own uh, a few electric scooters myself and uh, I have faced as much problems as the Ola folk uh, owners have faced even though a dealer has been present. So, I am not too sure whether dealers are actually providing any better service or any worse service than a company would. So, I would say the jury is still out and we will kind of wait and watch as to see whether the direct to consumer model which Bhavesh and company have got a lot of confidence in becomes a template for uh, the future as far as electric vehicles are concerned. Just giving my own thoughts on some of the questions from uh, the telegram group that Plugin India runs. So, uh, this question is from Dipanjan Das and uh, whether or not we will be upgraded with the cooling system if it comes in place. So, Dipanjan, uh, I think it is very difficult to put in a cooling system in place in the current model. So, I am not too sure if they do end up coming with a battery pack which is with aluminum instead of plastic, I think you can replace the outer casing of your this thing with the aluminum casing, but I do not know uh, that that definitely is feasible. So, maybe if at all it happens, maybe you can check with the company. Your next question was about uh, subsidy and uh, uh, you know whether you should kind of get an unlocked battery because you kind of uh, paid for the subsidy or you they, the company has taken the subsidy from the government. Now, uh, see in Hewlett Packard printers, HP printers, uh, you have a lot of printers which are actually the same hardware and uh, they have provided features which are software locked and I think Ola is doing the same thing. So, I have not heard anybody claiming that uh, because you have given me the hardware, uh, now you should also unlock the software. So, I do not think it is a very fair argument to make uh, as far as, uh, you know, I think it is up to the company uh, and uh, whether they should unlock the battery for you, I think it is a price point. If you are ready to pay the price, they will unlock it for you. You do not need to go and buy the battery again. 
the plus point Deepankar I'll share with you is that if your battery is being consumed less you know the SOC is not crossing 80 percent you'll get a longer life in your battery so I don't think you need to worry too much there is a plus to having a bigger battery and not using the entire uh, this thing so uh, I think I hope that answers your question. Siddharth has Siddharth has this question about the steps being taken by the company to fix the BMS after the repeated fire issues uh, from the new batches. Uh, Siddharth, there has only been one fire. I repeat, right? So there is no no question of repeated fires. I don't know what the media is doing about getting this whole uh, exaggeration done as far as repeated fires in all the scooters are concerned. No, there's only been a single fire. And unfortunately, we have not been able to find a root cause for that so far. So I do not really think any changes have been made to the BMS. So uh, that is that's all that we know at this point of time. Deepak's questions, are the standards for paint, battery, assembly, are they world class? Now I started my career with an automobile company. Uh, my first job was with Tata Motors, but that was 30 years ago. Uh, compared to that, I would say yes and I have seen a few uh, companies uh, of late also. I would definitely say as far as cleanliness is concerned, as far as uh, air temperature and ventilation is concerned, the factory is definitely world class. Uh, now as far as battery production is concerned, I can confess over here I have not really seen too much of mass scale battery pack assembly happening. This is possibly India's largest mass scale battery production. Uh, I think they have done a lot of good things, a lot of precision is there because you have a robots which are doing the pick and place operations, you have robots which are doing the uh, wire bonding operations, right. So I think that is the best that can be done in the current circumstances. But uh, if you look at design, like I have said repeatedly, I think they have got the chemistry wrong. They need to go in with slightly different chemistry. NMC, NCA are not chemistries according to me which are well suited for India. Tesla may have used them but that is not really kind of saying too much because Tesla does not sell in India. Automobile four wheelers have the advantage of having liquid cooling which two wheelers will never or you know they will have but at very high price points. But if I ask you that I will give you a safer roller scooter with liquid cooling and it is going to cost two and a half lakh rupees. How many people are going to come up with that money and kind of you know. And, and let me tell you one thing even about the cars, uh, I have been using uh, Mahindra E2O uh, which has a battery pack which is air cooled and it has lasted 8 years and I would say in these 8 years with about couple of thousand cars running on the road there have been about 2 or 3 incidents of uh, the uh, smoke coming out and 0 incidents of flame happening and this is LFP right. So I think uh, LFP and India are made for each other, uh, I do not know. Uh, whether Bhavesh agrees with this statement or not but uh, in the press conference I asked this question directly to him whether they are going to give the LFP option in future and his answer was yes that in future that will happen. So, so uh, I would say that will be a long way to safety as far as Ola is concerned and as far as the industry is concerned. So looking forward. Okay, so that is it folks uh, that was about the Ola factory visit uh, that was about uh, what my observations were in the factory. And uh, if there are any more questions, please put them on the comment section and uh, remember to ring the bell and uh, subscribe in case you have not done that already. Thank you for watching. Right? And Bhavish ji, if you are watching the video, we have to buy chemistry, we have to buy Ola.